In scenario number two, we'll demonstrate ArcSight's log collection capabilities and differentiators, focusing here on custom event log passing. ArcSight is the inventor of Ceph, the common event format protocol, which is a de facto standard in the industry. In fact, our competition still enjoys the benefits of Ceph passing to get a jump start in their own log coverage. For those rare cases where an existing parser may not already exist, ArcSight provides customers with several options depending upon the complexity of the log source. We'll show two of them today. For simple logs, we have ArcSight Flex Agent Wizard. For the more sophisticated raw logs, we provide the Quick Flex Wizard. The Flex Agent Wizard is a simple UI driven tool that proves to be quick and easy for even the inexperienced SOC analyst or SIM engineer, taking only six steps from start to finish. However, we know that logs today are not always that simple, and we have another utility for more advanced, complex requirements and use cases. The QuickFlex wizard also provides a UI-driven, wizard-based approach, giving the advanced user additional power where it's needed. Let's demo the first option, the Flex Agent wizard. Let's take a look at the sample log file that we'll try to pass. It's a fictitious but typical simple log file. As you can see, each event appears on a single line, with each line following a very sim pattern. The events are delimited by a comma, starting with what appears to be an IP address of the device, the date and timestamp, source IP address, source port perhaps, and so on. Let's start the Flex Agent Wizard. In the welcome screen, we start by selecting the log file. We then give a friendly name for the project, which becomes also the file name for the parser file that will be generated. We can see that the tool has already made a guess as to what the correct delimiter should be, the comma, which is correct. The other parameters are also selected correctly. We click next. The next screen in the wizard allows the user to map the tokens found in the log file to their corresponding Ceph schema fields, all from a drop down menu. For example, the IP address that appeared at the start of each line, we map to device address. The timestamp to device receipt time source address, source port, and so on. Where there isn't a direct mapping to the Ceph schema for a given token, we can simply choose one of the custom event types or custom token types. This allows us to extend the schema as needed. Finally, we reach the stage of defining the vendor name from a drop-down list and also the product name as the log source. Now we can actually create a smart connector with the custom parser in built in, or we can simply save the parser itself, ready to be deployed en masse to existing smart connector deployments. Let's have a look at the generated parser file. And sure enough, we see all those tokens have been mapped to the relevant Ceph schema fields. We could make further modifications here, but for this example, this is sufficient. Let's start now with the second demonstration of our QuickFlex wizard. In this scenario, we have another fictitious but much more sophisticated log file. Each line provides uh, events in a slightly different format, although they seem to have some common patterns. Each distinct format we call submessage. We'll tokenize these and associate them with their own subparsers, all within a single tool, and again resulting in a single, more complicated parser file automatically generated. Let's make a start. Here's the high-level overview of the simple steps involved. Clicking Create New, we start a new project, we fill in the initial details, device vendor, device product. We select the log file, the sample log file we wish to pass. We can browse that log file and we'll pick one of the lines here, one example event from this log file for our example today. Click base regex editor. As you can see, the QuickFlex wizard's built-in regex engine has already made a guess and populated automatically the base regex section. I click the matching details button and I can see that we already have four tokens generated and we can review some sample values associated with each one. Click save to that token generation. Note below how those four tokens have now been uh, displayed. We can now go in and change the uh, internal name for each of the tokens to something more referenceable and easy to remember. The type and where relevant the sub format for that particular token. We can also select the actual assignment here, which is the mapping to a particular uh, Ceph schema field. Finally, we choose for the sub-message the ID or the token that is going to be used to select this particular sub-message, and we can also allow for additional data where needed. Clicking Save and OK. 
If we go back to the log file itself and click refresh, we can see those events that have been successfully passed with the, the highlighted tokens indicating what has been extracted with this, the parser file created thus far. Once I'm satisfied, I can click generate parser and export it. All of this automatically generated. This ends the demo. Thank you.